Welcome to our virtual Stations of the Cross. We're happy that you can join us during this Lenten season to reflect on the sacrifices that Jesus made for us. Please join us in prayer. Lord, after being condemned to death by Pilate, you began your long journey to Calvary. The people you encountered along the way either accepted or rejected you. Pilate and Herod turned their backs on you, whereas Mary, Veronica, and the centurion accepted you. As we begin this devotional way of the cross, we also are making a journey of decision to accept you as Lord and Savior or to reject you. By listening to the thoughts of the biblical characters who met you along the way, may our hearts be moved to hear your call, a call to change and to follow you. Amen. First Station, Pilate Condemns Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Pilate. When Pilate saw he was not succeeding at all, he took water and washed his hands. I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. Of course, I was there at the trial. History will probably say that I could have prevented the Nazarene's death but put yourself in my position. Those Jews were a horrible nation of people, hard-headed, violent, and contemptuous. There was never any pleasing them. Once, when I brought portraits of the emperor into the Jewish temple, the Jews complained to the emperor himself. Even Rome feared their fanaticism and did not back me when I took action against them. I had only one thought, advancement out of this uncivilized backward nation. Then the Jewish leaders brought a harmless rabbi to be put to death. This Jesus told me he was the son of God. I am a superstitious man. I don't deny it. I don't like prosecuting gods, even Jewish ones. So I did my best to free him. Instead, the mob begged for a murderer, a certain Barabbas, to be set free. Well, imagine what it was like to hear that mob shout, if this man goes free, Pilate, you are no friend of Caesar. Yes, another report to the emperor would have meant the end of my career. After all, a person must think of himself. You get ahead by playing the court game, wouldn't you agree? So I condemned him. If you had been there, would you have done differently? Let us pray. Jesus, blind ambition is no stranger in our lives. Without your help, we, like Pilate, are capable of betraying the innocent. Remind us that a betraying the innocent we are betraying train you. May we never make others our scapegoats, no matter how powerless or disabled they may be. Give us the strength to say no to the group when we are pressured into being thoughtless and cruel to others. May the clamor of the mob never overpower the quiet voice of our conscience. Amen. When 
when Pilate washed his hands. Second station, Jesus accepts the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Barabbas. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Call me Barabbas, or whatever name you wish. I watched the Nazarene as he took up his cross, and I saw him fall again and again. You might ask, why did I follow him along the way? It wasn't that I became his disciple. It was just that I was curious. Anyone would be curious about a person who became your free ticket out of jail. Frankly, I didn't understand the man. He didn't act like a Messiah at all. I can appreciate hatred, vicious, cutting hatred. In fact, I had killed Romans and I fully intended to do it again until every Roman was driven from our land. But Jesus, he didn't hate the Romans or intend to kill them. He didn't curse the soldiers as they put a crown of thorns on his head. Instead, after his trial, he stood there like a lamb as they spit on his face. Then he accepted the cross without a murmur like a person predestined to carry it. I guess I don't understand anyone who doesn't fight back or hurt his enemy. Yes, I was there on that Friday. Were you there also? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, if your son was destined to die in place of Barabbas, beyond that, it was your plan that Jesus died for all of us. He became the Lamb of God, sacrificed for all people. Lord God, we are free to choose new life and to receive this wondrous gift of salvation. At this present moment, we gratefully accept the death of Jesus, which has freed us from the prison of sin and offered us new life. Amen. Third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Herod. Herod and his soldiers treated him, Jesus, contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. You ask me if I was there? Me, Herod? Of course I was there. Out of my palace window, I saw him carry his cross and stumble to the ground. He once said, I'm told, that everyone needs to take up his cross to be his disciple. He had some message about serving others. What a fool Jesus was babbling about sacrifice and selflessness. What did it get him but death? After all, 
What is life all about except for its many pleasures? Wouldn't you agree? To me, life is such a bore. Amusement is the only thing that relieves the boredom. But back to Jesus. I could have saved him, this rabbi, if he had only, if he had only humored me. Had he just pulled a few tricks, showed me a miracle or some magic. Who knows? Ha! I might even have followed him. But he turned out to be a simpleton, a silent one at that, who wouldn't even talk to me. Yes, I was there, and through my window I saw him crash to the ground with his cross. It seemed like the whole world was there. Surely you were there too. Let us pray. Jesus, as Herod saw you struggling under the weight of the cross, he called you a fool. You chose the cross and refused to become his court jester and entertainer. In our society, Lord, it is easy to be pleasure-oriented and live for the moment. In challenging us to become his disciples, give us wisdom to see the value of carrying our daily cross. Amen. Fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Mary, mother of Jesus, your mother and brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Here am I, his own mother, and I couldn't recognize him. The shock went through my body like the tremor of an earthquake as I saw my son carrying the cross. Then Jesus found my eyes. Although it was I saw a piercing pain in his eyes, I also saw peace. Suddenly, all the earlier memory memories began to flood my soul the memory of that day long ago when I said yes to a messenger of God. How could I have known what that yes would have cost me? Fleeing with Joseph to save our children or our child from a mad king's sword, searching all over Jerusalem for three days for our little boy. Nor could I ever forget the day when, as a grown man, he laid down his carpenter tools once and for all. Of course, I was puzzled as he prepared to leave, saying those strange words, I have my father's work to do. Father's work. Was dying on the cross the father's work? When I saw his bruised and swollen faith, faith was all I have left. Faith alone helped me accept God's will that Friday when the universe howled with insane laughter and darkness enveloped the sun. Jesus' eyes said to me on that good Friday, believe in God, trust in the loving Father. Let us pray. Lord of the universe, how difficult it is to accept the world that includes people who are violent, selfish, and deceitful. 
Sometimes it seems impossible to make sense out of the confusion of life. Then, like Mary, we must cling to our faith and trust in you, a loving Father who cares about each one of us. We affirm your mysterious plan for our world, but that ultimately good will triumph over evil. Lord, in embracing the personal crosses of our lives, allow us to become not bitter persons, but better persons. Amen. Fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon of Cyrene. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. I was coming in from the fields to do some trading when my curiosity led me into the crowds to see what all the commotion was about. Before I knew what happened, a Roman centurion seized me by the arm and forced me to carry this criminal's cross. Under my breath, I cursed my rotten luck. Wrong place at the wrong time. I felt sorry for this poor fellow who was going to die on the cross, but I was mighty glad it wasn't me. I still, I hated the weight of those wooden beams and the roughness of the road. So I asked myself, why has this happened to me, Simon, the poor farmer? Why do bad things always happen to me? But then I saw the face of Jesus a face I could never forget. He nodded his head as if to thank me. Suddenly, the cross seemed lighter. It was no longer a burden for me to carry. Yes, this event was forever etched in my heart. As it turned out, I was in the right place at the right time. And I am thankful that I could help him carry his burden. What about you? Were you in the crowd that day? Let us pray. Jesus, Jesus, Simon at first reluctantly shouldered your cross, angrily resenting the burden. Only with time did he he willingly assist you in the journey of the cross. When he saw our misfortune, he later counted as a blessing. Simon's reluctance and anger are a part of all of us. Give us open hearts to see your presence in the sick, the hungry, and homeless people of our world. And give us generous hearts to respond to their needs through works of mercy. Amen. Simon 
shared his cross. Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Veronica, when did you see a stranger and welcome him, or naked and clothe you? Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. I had known Jesus only from a distance. I listened to his preaching and to his dreams of a kingdom where the wolf would lie down with the lamb. I heard his burning words of hope on the mountainside. I saw him heal others, and I knew his special kindness towards women. I remember him saying once that when you give a cup of water to the least of your brothers or sisters, you give it to him. When I heard he was condemned to die, I hastened to be near the side of the road leading to Golgotha. I heard him groaning under the weight of the heavy cross. On his face were blood and grimy sweat. I pulled off my veil and ran to wipe his face. As a soldier raised his whip, I winced. But instead of lashing out, he shook his head in disgust and lowered his arm. The master's bloodshot, piercing eyes encountered mine and seemed to say, Thank you, Veronica. As I removed my veil from Jesus' face, I was surprised. His gift from my small deed of kindness was a rough imprint of his face. I was able to help Jesus in my own way. What about you? Were you there when Jesus passed your way? Let us pray. Jesus, what a beautiful, spontaneous gesture. Veronica wiping your bruised and bleeding face. Fearlessly, she seized the moment that would never come her way again. Make us spontaneous Christians who are not afraid to take a risk. Like Veronica, may we comfort you when we sit over you sick, whether in the hospital or in the home. May we find you in the faces of the poor and the suffering. Remind us of the smallest kindness done with the least of our brothers and sisters is done for you. Amen. Seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Caiaphas, likewise the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves. He saved others, he cannot save himself. I stood there along the road and saw Jesus fall a second time. He shivered with pain and exhaustion as he collapsed to the ground. It seemed like the drama would soon be over. I was only performing my duties as a high priest when they brought Jesus to me and said, Caiaphas, this is a dangerous man. Not only had he blasphemed by claiming to be God, but he had also misled and corrupted the people. Besides breaking the Sabbath, Jesus had predicted the destruction of the temple 
and driven out the money changers on his own authority. After all, who was this Jesus but an ordinary laborer, an unlettered carpenter's son who had the arrogance to challenge our lawyers and rabbis? But most important of all, I had to protect the nation. The so-called Messiah, who had a gift for deceiving the people, could destroy the peace and bring the Roman hordes crashing down upon us. Better that one man die than that nation be destroyed. I saw Jesus fall that day, and I wasn't sure he would ever get up again. Did you also see him fall? Let us pray. Jesus, in your journey to Golgotha, you felt the weight of the cross and the mockery of the high priest as you, as you fell, fell for the second time. How, how quick we are to be self-righteous with people who challenge us. How easily we condemn people who didn't have the education or opportunities we had. There are times that we too feel burdened with the weight of the cross in loneliness, weariness, sickness, depression, and misunderstanding. We are sometimes brought low. Make our yoke sweet and our burden light through your abiding grace. Amen. Eighth station, Jesus meets the weeping women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Woman in the crowd. A large crowd of people follow Jesus. Including many women who mourned and lamented him. You won't get any name from me. It's safer to remain an anonymous mourner. I was part of a group of women who accompanied and cared for criminals condemned to be crucified. But Jesus was no ordinary criminal. Our leaders had accused him not only of breaking the law, but also of being a blasphemer. And yet I was puzzled. How could a gentle, harmless healer who had a reputation of doing so much be condemned to such a cruel death? Who am I to judge? Me as an ordinary mother. It was only when we met him on the way that we saw how cruel they were to him, and I was touched. My tears became genuine. Imagine our surprise when he turned to us and said, don't weep for me, rather, Weep for yourselves and for your children. That alarmed me because his manner was that of a prophet. He seemed like a man with a message, a message that I didn't fully understand. I didn't understand the mystery about Jesus, yet I believed he was someone special, possibly the Messiah. What about you? What do you believe? Let us pray. Jesus, you met a group of weeping women along the way of the cross. You told them to not weep, not for you, but for the nation that would soon be cruelly scattered by the Romans. Give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear the prophets among us. Lord, grant us compassion for other sufferers and a sincere sorrow for our personal sins 
that have crucified you down through the ages. Amen. Ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Roman centurion. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. I was there, a Roman centurion, part of the most disciplined war machine in the world. I watched the king of the Jews as he crashed to the ground and was helpless to get up. Even now my guilt haunts me when I remember what we had done to Jesus in the courtyard, how we mocked him, crowning him with thorns and played vicious games by striking his blindfolded face. It was my official role to make sure he would die on that Friday. He was just another criminal, another person to be crucified with Roman efficiency. But then I began to study this man. No, he was more than a man. It was far more than a darkness or lightning that influenced me. It was his manner. I had seen hundreds of men face death on the cross. They cursed and screamed. Jesus was different. He had a strange peace about him that went beyond my understanding. He forgave the people who taunted him under the cross. In the end, he died like a god with dignity. Finally, under the cross, I was driven to my knees, driven to recognize him for what they said he was the King of God, Son of God. I asked him to forgive me for my cruelty and hardness. I was there when he fell a third time. Were you there? Did you recognize him too? Let us pray. Father, as Jesus fell a third time, the Roman centurion discovered something deeper in your Son than the mere humanity. Rather, he found divinity in the patience, goodness, and the forgiveness of the Savior. Almighty God, we often look for an all-powerful God to rescue us from our trials and our enemies. Help us to find your presence in the patience, goodness, and forgiveness of others. Amen. Tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his clothing. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Unrepentant criminal. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Watching Jesus get stripped of his clothing, I knew that I was next. I hated him because he didn't curse the Romans like I did. I despised him for his peaceful face. Finally, I mocked him because he said he was the Messiah. For if he were really the Messiah, he would have led our people to freedom from the scourge of these Romans. So yes, I baited him. I tried to get him angry at the Romans, at me, at anyone. When I couldn't get, our, get him angry, I even begged him, save us, save us. Are you the son of God? Save us if you got God's power. As a desperate criminal condemned to the cross, I would have done anything to save my hide. I wanted to live a little longer, but he seemed to welcome death as if it were a door to a greater life. I was there when he stood with dignity as the Romans humiliated him. He filled my soul with bitterness. Were you there watching also? Let us pray. Lovely me, Father, in the eyes of a bitter criminal, they stripped your son Jesus of his freedom and rights on the day of his trial. Then they stripped him of his clothing before they nailed him to a cross. However, they could, they could not, not strip him of his dignity as your beloved son. Clothe us in the warmth of father's love and in inner dignity as your sons and daughters. Through the experience of your grace, remind us that we are your family, even though we may wander far from you. Amen. Eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Good thief. The other, however, rebuking him, said, This man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. When they began nailing Jesus to the cross, I heard the gasps of pain, and yet I heard no curse from his mouth. I told my fellow prisoner to keep quiet. We deserve what we got, but Jesus, well, he was different. From the days of my youth, I was a liar and a thief. Later, I became a professional who stole for a living and a murderer who had killed many Romans after joining the insurgents. The thought of right and wrong rarely passed through my head, but something in Jesus made me look at myself and face myself, maybe for the first time. People told me he talked about forgiveness and mingled with the rough crowd, the sinners, and that he promised a better life in another world. I didn't understand this mysterious kingdom and how it would come about, but I believed in it. Likewise, he talked to God as if he were talking to his father. 
Yes, I saw Jesus open his arms and get nailed to a cross as though he wanted to embrace the world. I heard Jesus call my name, Dismas. Then he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. I was there and became a believer. Did you become a believer too? Let us pray. Jesus, as they nailed you to the cross, you were like a lamb going to the sacrifice. Instead of cursing your enemies, you forgave them and excused their ignorance. You offered salvation to a thief who repented. Lord, Make, make us, us aware that your cross means forgiveness and salvation. Lead us to repentance of our sins, so that, so that like a thief, we too might join you in paradise. Amen. Wall Station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Magdalene. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. I watched the life draining from Jesus, watched as he gasped for breath. Jesus had driven seven devils from me and had healed and welcomed me as a follower, me, Magdalene, a sinner, a woman. Yes, it was my sins, my weaknesses that helped place him on the cross. I felt that. During the hours of his suffering, I understood what sin was, not just the sin of the Roman soldiers, but my sins and everyone's sins. Sin meant death. Sin meant killing Jesus, my master. Sin meant crucifying him to a cross. In some mysterious way, I understood what Jesus had done. He had taken my arms, our sins, and nailed them to the cross. As I gazed at his battered body, words of forgiveness echoed in my mind. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Jesus' words of forgiveness resounded in Mary's heart too, calling her to forgive those who had killed her son. I was present and saw the agony of Jesus. Were you there when Jesus died for our sins? Let us pray. Jesus, what a sad moment when Magdalene stood under the cross. Help us to assist you, her Savior. How grateful indeed was your mother to have Magdalene present in her time of pain and sorrow. Grant us not so much to be consoled as to console. Call us to a change of heart, so that, like Magdalene, we might follow you. Enlighten our minds to see that sin is harmful to us and others. But teach us that, no matter how sinful we are, we can be forgiven through your death. Amen. Head and 
13th station, Jesus has laid in the arms of his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Salome. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee approached him with her sons. Command that these two sons of mine sit, one at your right, and the other at your left. My sons had fled. What irony that I, Salome, remained to watch the soldiers lay Jesus' dead body in his mother's arms. I touched Mary's shoulder while she cradled him as though he were a child again and rocked him to sleep. I felt ashamed when I thought of how I had asked Jesus to place my boys, James and John, at his right and left, in positions of power. Jesus had asked my sons if they could drink the cup of suffering. At the time, they didn't understand him. Even when, during the Last Supper, he passed the cup of wine, which would signify his coming death, my sons and the other disciples ran to safety in Galilee as Jesus carried his cross alone. Only later would I realize why Jesus had to suffer, and while my petty ambitions for my sons would seem childish and silly. Only under the cross did I understand why Jesus acted like a slave during the Last Supper and washed the feet of my sons. I was there when Jesus died and thought of his cup of suffering. Were you there too? Could you drink of his cup? Let us pray. Jesus, the last thing that Salome wanted for her sons was failure. In the eyes of an ambitious world, to see you carry a cross by a criminal signified complete failure. In various ways, we all cringe at the very thought of the losing face. Schools as you are in the American dream of success. Lord, Prevent us from walking over people in order to get ahead. If we must compete, let it be healthy competition. Better yet, let us work together to build a just kingdom of peace and love. Amen. Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Nicodemus. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. Nicodemus also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes. 
After preparing Jesus' body for burial, I helped Joseph, my friend, place Jesus' broken body in the tomb. In truth, Joseph was braver than I, asking for his body and knowing very well that the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, with wagging tongues, would take care of, would take note of that action. I admired the rabbi, but from a distance. When I met him, it was always at night under the cover of darkness so that no one would see me with him. Call it human respect or whatever you want. I was afraid of what my peers might say or do if they knew I was attracted to Jesus. I secretly admired his teaching too, even though he sometimes puzzled me, like when he said, Nicodemus, To enter God's kingdom, you must be born through water and the spirit. But after the crucifixion, I no longer cared about risking my fellow Pharisees' displeasure. I was angry and ashamed that they had given Jesus over to the Romans to be crucified. I was even angrier at myself for not stepping forward sooner. I was there with Joseph when he placed the stone against the entrance of the tomb. What about you? Were you there on that dark Friday? Let us pray. Jesus, in the beginning of your public life, Nicodemus showed himself as a weak and timid follower. Later, at your own death, he became an open witness, strengthened by our faith in your resurrection and your conquest over sin and death. Make us all followers and fearless witnesses to the Father's plan for us to bring about his kingdom in this world. Amen. Let us pray. Father, during our lifetime, each of us makes a personal journey on the way of the cross. Similar to the characters we have seen, We are confronted by many decisions for and against Christ. Renew within us the grace of baptism so that we may choose to follow your Son. Enliven within us the grace of confirmation so that as your people, made new by the Spirit, we may become modern witnesses of your death and resurrection. Amen. Oh.